Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're going to talk about what's the purpose in having land if you can't access it all. So as many of you know, here at Red Tool House, we have 100 acres in the eastern Appalachian hardwood forest, <laughs> or what I consider the northern jungle. <laughs> Somebody needs to mow some grass around here. Let's just go that way if you would. Uh, just up to the face of the greenhouse and we'll just lay it down. That way when I mow here in a couple months, I'll run right over it and not even remember. What is it? That's all right, just go ahead and drop it. I have all the confidence in the world that I'll pick that up in a day or two. <laughs> so I often joke with people that say, wow, you've got 100 acres, Troy, that must be incredible. And it is, I'm not, uh, I do like having the land, but I joke that where we're standing right now is really the only place on the entire 100 acres where I can turn a truck around with a trailer, just because of the topography of our land. So, you're probably wondering what does monkeying around with this pipe with my dad have to do with what we're talking about? We have a road that goes back to the center of the property that I would call a three season road in the wintertime. Even the side-by-side -side has a little bit of issues. The tractor, it, just, it really tears it up, so I try not to be back there that much. I want to be able to access that portion of the land. I'll show you on the map here. That's the area we call the retreat. I want to be able to access that portion of the road all year long without tearing a bunch of stuff up. In fact, my goal, some point down the road, is to say I want to be able to drive my Silverado from here all the way back there without tearing it up. And for Silverado, that's a big task, of course. So that's the plan. Today is day two of a full week rental on a mini excavator where we're dressing up our road, fixing some issues, and we're putting some culverts in, we're working on drainage, we're working on slope, all those type of things to help get the water off the road so we can have access to these portions of land that we normally wouldn't all year long. <laughs> Hateful thing up, yeah. If only somebody had a tractor that they could lift this thing with. Okay. <sighs> you think a piece of plastic would be that daggone heavy? So I think with any piece of land, having good balance of natural elements, pasture, uh, accessibility, perfect use, as far as farming or homesteading goes, there's a good balance. Here in West Virginia with our topography, it's, it's very vital to have road access throughout the property simply because without being flat, uh, there's some places that are completely unreachable unless you, you cut roads or paths or trails. So come along with us. We're going to set some culverts and do some work here. We'll detail the uh, little sections that we're working on and give you the reason as to why we're doing what we're doing.
So the first and most formidable obstacle in our main road to the back of the property, or to the retreat, I should say, was our corduroy road. This area right behind the barn, as you're just coming past the mill and, and start up the valley, this is an area that, of course, has a lot of tree cover, stays wet, uh, exposed rocks, so water comes out of the rocks from the springs. And uh, you've seen plenty of footage of our corduroy road and how we actually tried to put it in and, and help uh, uh, try to mitigate some of that mud. Well, by having the excavator, we were able to come in, cut some ditches, put the overburden on the road, even dredge some uh, uh, gravel out of the stream to build up some base there. And I'll show you some details of what we did. So here at the beginning, we have a little bit of a downward slope from this rock outcrop down here. So I've just put a piece of six inch well casing in as a culvert, makeshift culvert, and then of course cut a ditch line to that. So this ditch line, as you can see, is, is now holding the water that's coming out from under the rocks where our springs are. And uh, of course you see the ditch going all the way up and there's some of our boards from the corduroy sticking out. We went ahead and buried the boards from what I've read and what some of you all had commented was, um, that's the thing to do. So we weren't going to mess with pulling them up, we just buried them up. And you can kind of see the elevation difference we have in the, uh, in the road now. It really picked it up quite a bit. So this portion of the road used to have a really bad pitch to it. And uh, so we uh, dredged out this watershed, that erosion over time from the previous owners where they did a lot of garden, uh, gardening up on that other bench. This watershed had really eroded and filled in. That's why you can see all of this is fill. And that's about four feet deep of a trench. And didn't hit rock till it got right over here to the edge of this little finger coming down. So even more of that is just fill. Allow me to pause briefly to feed my swine, and I'll show you what we did to, around the board pasture. Hold Get back to these. Um. Crazy pigs. So right here at the boar pasture, we used to have this watershed, came down the mountain here, and it just kind of crawled. Sometimes it would go across over into the creek, sometimes it would turn and go down the road. It was always a pain. So we dug a ditch, tied it in all the way down here to our springs. So you can see there on the right, goes on down and then right in that little low spot is solid stone. So that's where it's going to cross there. And that'll be okay. It won't be, it'll still be a little bit of mud, but it won't be a huge issue since it's solid stone once it clears off all the dirt off the top of it. So here at the back corner of the boar pasture, we have our four foot culvert that we've had in uh, for a very long time. My folks got me this culvert years and years ago and I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. It was <clears throat> a little too narrow to use as a regular creek crossing down at the at the main creek. So brought it up here when we got the dozer in here two years ago and set it in this spot. Well, we didn't have a very good approach. It was kind of a big old hump to get over it. So by pulling some dirt here, and you can see pulling ditch lines here, we were able to put enough overburden to get all that leveled out and make a nice smooth transition there. So this is the main stretch climbing an elevation out of the creek going back to the retreat. You can see the summit, the highest point of the road back there. Uh, the water kind of came down in various places. We didn't have a good ditch uh, established, so now we've cut a ditch line that will drain the water well, keep it off the road, and hopefully stay nice and dry. So this by far has to be my favorite improvement that we've done so far. So you can see here's our 30-inch culvert, 20 feet long. It's uh, buried there in the creek. Got a nice approach, super wide road now with a much more gradual slope. It used to be steeper as it got to the creek. Nice ditch line established here for the bank. I'll turn around here real quick so you can see just how hard packed all this is. With all this clay and uh, the tramming with the excavator and dad with the box scraper, we really were able to get a nice pack down. To the right there where you see the darker dirt, that is some uh, dredging we did. That area would always stay swampy because there's just so much water that hangs around there. So we um, piled it up a little bit more, made it a little higher. And then uh, you can see there's actually a, a little ditch that I cut. So any water that wants to pool there will drain down into the main creek. So it's really exciting some of the things this work has already revealed. We're on, I just finished up day three, and I, yeah, I say... We've got it for the week. You got it for 40 hours. That's the way most of these rental processes work. 
and I don't think we've hit uh, 20 hours yet. So I've got plenty of time left. I'm actually running out of days because there's other projects I got to be working on, but this is the only time that I can do this before uh, wet weather hits. It's been wet all summer, uh, and this has been a little bit of a dry spell here in September. But this is really opening my eyes to see the value of, of putting this time and money into just these type of infrastructure improvements. With 100 acres in West Virginia, all mountainous, there's just no way to access any of this land. And other than a nice stroll in the woods or hunting, there's really not much value to it for me. Now, I could easily bring my Silverado back here with a trailer and turn it around here if I wanted to. Now, granted, I'd need to cut some limbs. There's some limbs there that would be scratching up the truck, which uh, that can easily be remedied. But it's just really exciting to see this finally come together. We can really dedicate some time now, when we have it, uh, to getting the retreat going. Several years ago, I shot some video footage with the GoPro stuck to the front of the side-by-side -side and drove back here when the road was uh, the way it's been for most of the time we've been here. So I'm going to show you that footage, and then I'm going to drive it now with the GoPro on the side-by-side -side with the road in the, in the condition it's in now and see what you think. So you can see by that footage that uh, not only is that a wider, smoother, drier ride, it also decreases my commute time considerably. I was uh, up to 25 miles an hour there, one, one spot on that straightaway. Not that time is a big issue as far as getting from point A to point B in this situation, but it's, it's nice to have that type of road base there. This um, John Deere 35G has been a great little workhorse of a machine. I say little, it's not that little, it's 7,700 pounds. It's formidable machine but man it's getting the work done really just sips the diesel really enjoyed using that love to have one of these in the stable but uh if john deere's listening i'd be more than happy to demo one for a couple years <laughs> we'll talk about it all the time <laughs> probably not going to happen but um I know that you, uh, there's some of you guys asking the question that everybody probably wants to ask how much are we talking about well my local rental here was eight hundred dollars uh, transport was not included, but a buddy of mine has um, a heavy-duty trailer and a uh, F-350, 
So even though it was a Ford, it still was able to tow the um, the excavator down here. So I, I didn't have transport. He wouldn't. I put gas in his truck. He wouldn't let me give him any money. But that's what friends are for, I guess. Factor in the diesel, and then I did go buy some culverts. Uh, some of the culvert I had, other other piece I bought. Um, I'm, I'm hovering right around now, um, about eleven hundred dollars, I believe. So uh, not too bad. And the beauty of this is. Um, this, this whole project was brought to you by pigs. Pigs paid for all of this. That's why it's great to have uh, you know, some income opportunity on the farm. Uh, we're not going to show it in this video. We'll do that in uh, uh, Sunday's video. Is going to show we, we built a small impoundment and we done, did some other road improvements. And then we also have a project up at the house that we're working on. And if we still have the hours, we may do some other things. So we'll be sure to show that. A couple weeks ago, I had mentioned uh, Rock Rooster sent me some boots to try out because I just couldn't find a pair of boots. You guys had a lot of good comments. I appreciate all the good input as far as boots that you've tried out. I really uh, I love it when you guys give me suggestions like that. Uh, so far, Rock Rooster, I, I'm really impressed, man. They've, they've got some, the soles, the, the, the comfort of the boot has been outstanding so far. Uh, sitting on this machine uh, three days straight, running the mill, you know, doing all the typical stuff that I do not been an issue at all. I, I discussed how my my Georgia boots had, had left some big calluses after a day on my toe, and, and those calluses are actually starting to diminish. And I know you guys are thinking, great, Troy's talking about things on his feet. That's awesome. Um, but it, it's really, really impressed so far. Again, longevity is the is the big concern that I have, and we're not going to know that until you know, a year or two from now. But um, I do like it. Um, they do uh, offer an affiliate link for me, and some of you guys have already purchased. I appreciate that, even though I didn't fully give it my thumbs up yet. You did purchase. I appreciate you using that link and supporting us. That's awesome. Uh, but check them out. They've, uh, they've got some good lines. Uh, Kelly just got a pair of hiking boots from them, and we're going to feature those coming up. Um, she's, she's tried them out a little bit, walked around a little bit just to kind of break them in, and likes what she sees so far. So we'll, uh, we'll keep you all updated on that as well. But we'll keep moving dirt and we'll keep shooting video. All right, take care, everybody.